Moving over to the offensive side, uh, Adam, you mentioned the, the question marks potentially at second base um, and catcher, and you don't know what you're going to get out of people like Murphy. Does that put a lot of pressure? Um, I know they've performed well, but the you know the left side of the infield with Reyes and right and even Beltran in center, and you got to hope you get at least close to what you got in the second half out of Delgado um, this year. So what do you what it, what does the offense look like? Is it going to be a lot of you know a lot of pressure put on Wright and Reyes to to perform well to carry some of the suspect spots in the lineup? Well, the Mets scored 799 runs last year. That was tied with the Phillies for second most in in the National League. So I think the Met front office is confident uh, about the the offense. I, I think you know what you're going to get from Wright, Reyes, and and Beltran. Although this wrinkle of, of Reyes. Uh, Hitting third is a, is a little bit interesting. Uh, the, I think the big question mark among those core players, so to speak, is, is Delgado. Are you going to get what you got in the first half or the second half? Delgado going into July last year was hitting, I think it was 228. So uh, certainly he's a major question mark. And uh, I mean, if he's going to bat, if if it is going to be Castillo one, uh, Beltran two, and Reyes three in the order, Delgado's four. Uh, and then Wright's five. Uh, Delgado's got to perform in, in a cleanup spot, or else Reyes hitting ahead of him is a waste. And one of the good things about Reyes hitting third would be that Delgado would probably get a lot of fastballs hitting fourth because Reyes is a is a stolen base threat. Now, if you have a rotisserie, uh, if you're in a rotisserie league, and, and Jose Reyes is going to bat third, he's obviously going to have fewer steals than he, when he was uh, lead off. So you might want to take that into consideration. But uh, I, I don't. Think there's any concern about Reyes, Wright, or Beltran performing? They seem to put up pretty consistent numbers year to year. Um, there was a rumor a little while back that the Mets wanted to dump uh, Ramon Castro's salary, and there's also a rumor I read that Pudge uh, prefers to play for the Mets. Do you see any possibility of either of those happening? Well, the uh, the, the Pudge reports, well, Pudge being quoted as saying the Mets are interested in him, was kind of curious because everyone in the Mets front office says there's almost zero chance of, of him ending up with the Mets. I, I really don't foresee that. Now, are they enamored with Brian uh, Schneider and Ramon Castro? No. Uh, they're both free agents after the year, although if you look at the free agent list, there aren't many free agents that are attractive after the year, uh, and there's no one really in the Mets system to take over, so I could see both catchers coming back next year. Uh, but I, I really don't foresee uh, Schneider or Castro uh, going anywhere uh, in spring training or early on in the year. Uh, after the year is the big question mark, and as I said, given that there's very few people out there on the free agent market, uh, Mets may be kind of, so to speak, stuck with with these guys for a few more years. You may, um looking at the rest of the division. Obviously, the Phillies are the defending world champs and back-to-back -back, uh, you know, division champs. But uh, you have a lot of talk. You know, Cole Hamels with the the fan, now famous. You know, the Mets are choke artists. Uh, you know, David Wright didn't really respond. Kind of, you know, just let it go. Wherever, but Carlos Beltran. Uh, kind of opened his mouth a bit going into spring training, saying he hopes the Mets, you know, took it to Hamels a lot this year. Do you feel like that the Phillies seem to be in the Mets' head a bit? You know, with the last couple of years, and the Phillies, you know, the Phillies talk, and then they seem to back it up, and then the, you know, this is the second time that you know Beltran's tried to to talk, and the last time it didn't really work out, uh, or you know, kind of you know made them look bad in September. But do you think the Phillies seem to be in the Mets' head a bit? And they, you know, they're always talking about the Phillies. You know, the Phillies said this, so let's get at them. Do you think that they're in their head now uh, as the Mets head to uh, St. Lucie? I don't think the, the, the Phillies are in the Mets' heads at, at all. In fact, the last two years, even though the Phillies won a division, I'm pretty confident I think the Mets won the, the season series both years. I think it was 11-7 mm -hmm. Mets last year. So mm -hmm. what, what's happened is I think the Mets have felt a lot more pressure in September to the lead to having been being chipped away and haven't been as, as mentally tough. Although I, while I'd call 2007 a collapse, I, I'd probably label 2008 a little bit. I, I think collapse is kind of strong for that because – I just don't think the bullpen was good enough, and I think they got caught from behind it at the end. But what, what's happening with, with these comments like Carlos, Carlos Beltran showing up and, and saying, I hope we uh, kill Hamels uh, when he's on the mound in, in New York, uh, and, uh, I think is that uh, they're having a little fun when reporters ask him about it. Trust mm -hmm. me, this, this doesn't <laughs> even come up until a reporter asks him about it. Jose Reyes today was asked about uh, the Phillies' uh, Kind of making fun of him during the, the postseason last year, and he responded to that. Uh, but but it really does not come up uh, remotely unless a reporter asks about it. And I think the same thing goes for 
uh, the Phillies camp. I, I'm close with one of the, the writers who covers the Phillies, and he basically said there's zero z- chatter about it at all until someone asked about it. Now, Jimmy Rollins did show up today and had some uh, amusing stuff to say. It was, <laughs> but it was just, I, I think they're really having fun more than anything. And there's, uh, yeah, there's a, definitely a rivalry there, but it's not like they beat each other up if they met each other in an alley or anything like that. <laughs> When it comes down to it, improving the bullpen, getting some pitchers, where are the Mets going to finish this year? Uh, they were neck and neck with the Phillies the last two years, and I think they'll be neck and neck again now. The Phillies have shown they're mentally tougher, so when I sit down and pick, uh, I have to think about it strongly. Now the Mets bullpen is significantly better, and uh, I really wouldn't discount the the Marlins either being a factor in the race. I'm not saying they're going to. I'm not going out and saying they're going to win the division uh, just yet, but uh, Marlins have very good young starting pitching in Hanley Ramirez, and uh, that combination, their, their infield has a ton of home runs. It's uh, an interesting team. If they get a little better defense, uh, I think they're going to be a factor soon. I really do think it's going to be a, a three-horse race. I, I don't uh, know that much about the, the Japanese pitcher the Braves signed. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the rotation is like. Obviously, Glavin is probably coming back on, I think I heard, uh, and you have Derek Lowe, so the rotation, uh, the Japanese pitchers good, could could be a little bit interesting too, but uh, I really do think it's a, a three-horse race with the Marlins being the third team. All right, well, you can read all this stuff in the New York Daily News. Adam Rubin, thanks a lot, man, and a lot of good stuff. Hopefully we can get you on uh, later in spring and uh, throughout the year. Sounds good, guys. Take care.